The search continues tonight in Texas for a San Antonio mother of two who's been missing for more than a week. Christina Powell was last seen last Tuesday, rushing out of her home because she was late for work, but she never got there. In her apparent hurry, Powell left two devices that could track her location. She left them behind her cell phone and her Apple Watch. That is where we begin tonight's true crime discussion with former Washington, D.C. homicide detective, Fox News contributor Ted Williams, and criminal defense attorney Bob Bianchi. Great to have both of you with us on some very interesting cases tonight. Welcome. Thank you, Sean. Thanks. Okay, so the headline is um, from Fox News that there have been discussions with the father of one of her children. They had had an argument, but police are ruling him out. They say the father of one of the missing Texas mom, Christina Powell's children, is, quote, absolutely cooperating with investigators and is, quote, clearly not a person of interest, despite her family's reports the pair had an argument just days before she disappeared. Um, Ted, what do you make of this? Because her family, too, some of the accounts I read said they don't think he's a suspect either, but it sounds like for now police are ruling him out, or are they? Well, you know, uh, I, I question why the law enforcement had to announce so early on in their investigation that they're ruling this person out as a person of interest. I would have to believe the mere fact that he had an argument with her or uh, that he has a three-year-old child with her, uh, that certainly at some stage he would continue to be uh, Shannon, a, a, a person of interest. Uh, so I don't know if this is just a fake or what it is. Uh, maybe they know more than mm -hmm. quite naturally we know at this stage. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay, so the son says this. Um, quoting her mom, what's most concerning is that nothing was taken from her bank account. She said she was able to access her daughter's bank account from the phone she left behind. It's also unusual for her to leave her phone. But worries me is that no money was taken from her account. If she did want to get away or go somewhere, she would be using money. Um, but, Bob, does it strike you that what she left behind were two things that could have helped track her position? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I agree. I, I, having given press conferences and murder cases as a prosecutor for so many years, why they would say this, only I can think, is that, first of all, two courses of action are going on. One, it's a missing persons unit case working in conjunction with homicide or the major crimes units to see whether or not anybody you're interviewing, if they find a body and somebody is dead, they want to build a case. So they may say he's not a person of interest, but I think really he may be, but they just want to make sure he continues to cooperate because he has an incentive to cooperate to throw them off the trail. To your point, Shannon, the idea that she left these devices behind, we just don't do that as normal human beings. So yeah, it could be that she doesn't want to be traced, but what they're going to do is they're going to go through all of her finances, all of her electronics, all of her records, to see whether or not they could track her. They're probably also employing the use of the uh, the marshals with regard who are the best trackers in the world. So why she had the stuff there or left it there, to me, spelled something nefarious, not as, as if she had gone off on her own, although there's an allegation she had done that hmm. some years ago with regard to this boyfriend. So well, right now we just don't have enough facts. Yeah, there's so much we don't know, but I also think, too, it was seven miles from her home where she was in a rush to get to work. I feel like there are cameras everywhere, speed cameras, traffic cameras, um, on businesses and homes, and, and hopefully that will help track to find her as well. Now, I got to ask you guys about this crazy case we've been following for a couple of years now out of South Carolina, um, where the now disbarred, um, fired attorney uh, from this very prominent family there, Alex Murdaugh, has been charged, and the New York Times says, with killing his wife and son. It says he's been indicted on two counts of murder, with prosecutors saying he fatally shot his wife, Maggie, with a rifle and his son, Paul, with a shotgun on June 7th, 2021. He'd called 9 one that night from the family's estate about 65 miles west of Charleston saying he had returned home to find his wife and son dead near his dog kennel. Uh, Ted, the charges just keep rolling in for this guy. Well, let me say this, Shannon. Uh, you're going to see movies made of this uh, incident down there in South Carolina. Uh, Alex Murdoch, uh, you and I had done a show in the past on him. Mm -hmm. I've always suspected that he may very well have been involved. What uh, SLED, SLED is the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. They have over the year put together a very good case. Uh, apparently from what they may very well have is some physical evidence. They had an alibi, but his alibi was not that tight. I can tell you, his wife was killed with a, a, a assault weapon. His son was killed with a shotgun. 
Uh, there was a lot of evidence that they were able to collect, and I think they've been able to connect the dots uh, with uh, Alex Murdaugh here. Okay, I want to make sure we read his defense statement. It says Alex wants his family, friends, and everyone to know he did not have anything to do with the murders of Maggie and Paul. He loved them more than anything in the world. Um, Bob, before we get cut off, I want to give you the quick final word. He stole millions of dollars from people. He tried to hire a hitman to execute himself mm -hmm. so that his son could get a $10 million policy. He's been charged with over 40 counts of fraud. He has been gotten himself deep in some sort of opioid conspiracy to distribute. And now his wife and his son wind up dead after they add to this. His son, who's been charged with a boat accident where he was giving information to law enforcement authorities that the lawyer father, who's now a defendant, had given, knew he was using a fake license. And uh, consuming it's alcohol it's illegally. The, uh, it's a made for TV movie, I agree. And it's they gonna, have cell phone data that belies his alibi. And there is going to be a mini series because you can't get this whole thing in two hours. Um, Ted and Bob, thank you both very much. Thank you. Good to see you guys. My pleasure.